Hi students, in this chapter, we will study about the heating effects of electric current. You see, electric current, the same electric current that we studied in the previous chapter, can be used in heating many devices. It is used in coffee makers, it is used in making electric kettles, it is used in electric bulbs, you know, bulbs are hot to touch, it's used in electric heaters. So the heating effects of electric current are very commonly used in our daily life. We will, you know, study in this chapter how heat is produced by electric current. We'll also study how much heat is produced if a certain battery is used to produce electric current. So let's understand more about the heating effects of electric current. Now let's start with the basics. This is a circuit shown on your screen. There's a battery, there's a key and current is flowing through the circuit. There's a resistance in the circuit also. <clears throat> now, what happens inside the battery is that chemical reactions take place inside the battery, isn't it? These chemical reactions produce electricity. So basically the chemical energy inside the battery gets converted to electrical energy. And it's this electrical energy that's moving the electrons, isn't it? The battery is converting its chemicals to electricity. And electricity is flowing. Now, chemical reactions have to keep on occurring inside the battery, you know, to produce electricity. That means that the electric energy must be getting lost, isn't it? After all, if it was not getting lost, in that case, the chemical energy would be converted to electrical energy in the battery. And then the electrical energy would keep on moving the electrons, isn't it? But there would be no loss of energy. So, one chemical reaction would be enough. Just once the chemical reaction in the battery would happen and that would be enough for the current to keep on flowing. After all, the chemical energy has been converted into electrical energy. So now the electrons will keep on flowing in the circuit. But this does not happen. The chemical reactions have to happen again and again and again inside the battery. Isn't it? So basically, again and again, chemical energy has to be converted to electrical energy. If you know, after some time we remove the battery, the current immediately stops as we remove the battery. What this tells us is that the chemical energy in the battery gets converted to electrical energy, but the electrical energy also gets lost as the electrons move in the circuit. This electrical energy is generally lost in the form of heat when resistances are connected in the circuit. Understood? If you look inside a resistance, this is what you will see. You see electrons move something like this inside the resistance. These blue particles you can see, they are the atoms of the element that the resistance is made up of. These green balls are the electrons, the free electrons that are moving in the resistance. Now what happens is that as they move through the resistance, they collide a lot with the positive ions and the other atoms present in the resistance. Because of these collisions, they lose energy. After all, what is electrical energy? It's the energy of the electrons that enables them to flow. This energy gets lost because the electrons collide with the positive charged particles and they slow down. Understood? Now, when the electrons collide with the positive charged particles, they also make the positive charged particles vibrate faster. Understood? And because of that, the temperature of the resistance increases heat in the wire gets generated. So the electrons lose their electrical energy in the form of heat energy. They give away their heat energy to positive charged particles and the neutral particles present in the resistors and they make the resistor particles vibrate faster. So the resistance becomes hot and the electrical energy of the electrons gets converted into heat energy. So that is the reason why a battery needs to constantly have chemical reactions and it needs to constantly supply electrical energy. Understood? Because the electrical energy keeps getting lost in the form of heat energy in the resistance like this. Understood? So that is how current produces heat. One thing you must remember here is that it's not always necessary that all of the electrical energy gets converted into heat. When there are only resistances in a circuit, then all of the electrical energy gets converted into heat. Understood? But sometimes when you create complicated circuits, you can make the electrical energy do some work also. Work also. Understood? If you take the example of a table fan, 
in the case of a table fan the electrical energy provided to the table fan gets converted to both heat and work the electrical energy provided by the battery or your power supply makes the fan rotate isn't it that means that the fan is doing some work and it's doing that only because of the electrical energy provided to it you learn in higher classes how electrical energy can be you know used to rotate a fan but for now you must remember that electrical energy in the case of a fan is used to do work and it is also used to generate heat if you touch a table fan after it's been rotating for 2 hours you'll see that it's hot isn't it the motor of the table fan is very hot why is it hot because some portion of the electrical energy coming from the power supply is going to heat up the table fan also the other portion will rotate the table fan however in the case when there's only resistance in that case only heat is generated in the circuit and no work is done in this chapter we will discuss circuits in which there are only resistances and therefore all the electrical energy provided by the battery will be dissipated as heat in your electric iron this is exactly what happens if you open up your electric iron you'll see that it mainly consists of only resistances understood nichrome is the perfect alloy used to make resistances so electrical irons have nichrome in them an electrical iron all the electricity provided is used to heat up the resistances in the electrical iron understood so it's a perfect example of electricity being converted into heat energy similarly in the case of a room heater the one you use in winter electric energy is converted into heat energy isn't it you can see sometimes that the rods of the heater become red hot or in the case of a blower you can notice you know that very hot air comes out of the blower in all these cases the electric energy is converted into heat energy again this heat energy is produced because the electrons that move they come in contact with the resistor particles and they make them vibrate faster and so heat is produced so this is how heat is produced from electricity now we have a simple question how much heat is produced if we connect a battery of v volts to a resistance r can we calculate that in this circuit you see on your screen there's a key there's a battery and this battery is connected to a resistor of resistance r so how much heat is produced in the resistor well that's very simple to calculate you see the battery is doing some work in moving the charge across the resistor understood you see the chemical energy of the battery is converted to electric energy this electrical energy is used to move the charge from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery isn't it no work is done in moving the charge or hardly any work is done in moving the charge from the positive terminal to the left end of the resistor because we are assuming that the rest of the wires have zero resistance in reality all wires have some resistance but here we are assuming that the red wires shown have zero resistance so no work is basically done in moving a charge from the positive terminal to this resistance similarly no work is done in moving the charge from the right end of the resistor to the negative terminal of the battery work is only done in moving charge across the resistor understood and this work is done by the electrical energy understood so basically all the electrical energy provided by the battery gets converted in the work done in moving charge from one end of the resistor to the other end of the resistor isn't it and we just saw you know in the case of resistances all the electrical energy is converted into heat energy therefore this energy you know that is used to carry the electron from one end of the resistance to the other end of the resistance is given off by the electrons to the particles of the resistance as heat energy so the work done by the battery in moving a charge from the left end of the resistor to the right end of the resistor is all converted into heat energy and that is why the battery has to again do work to again make charges move and so the chemical reactions in the battery have to keep on going on understood so the heat generated in the resistor is equal to the work done by the battery in moving a charge from the left end of the resistor to the right end of the resistor now clearly the potential difference across the resistor is v volts isn't it therefore the work done by the battery in moving the charge from its left terminal to its right terminal is clearly potential difference into charge we had studied in the previous chapters that potential difference into charge is the work done in moving the charge across that potential difference 
So V into Q is the work done by the battery if the battery moves the charge Q from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Now we also know that current is charge per unit time, the charge flowing per second and so charge is current into the given time. So Q can be written as IT. So the work done by the battery in time T is V into I into T. This work done is all dissipated as heat in the resistor. Therefore the heat dissipated is also V into I into T. So this is the formula for the heat dissipated in a circuit. V into I into T. The net heat developed in a resistor, the potential difference across which is V, is V into I into T. We can also calculate the heat dissipated per second by dividing V into I into T by T. Vi gives us the heat dissipated per second in every resistor. So there you go. Vi is heat dissipated per second and it is also referred to as electric power generated in a resistor. We will later learn about electric power in the next chapter. For now just remember that the heat dissipated per second is Vi. We can of course replace I by V by R because according to Ohm's law I is V by R. When we do that Vi can be also written as V square by R. Similarly V can be written as IR. So if you replace V square by IR you get I square R. These are all the same expression for the heat dissipated in a resistor per second. Of course the net heat dissipated comes by multiplying this power by time. It's Vit equal to V square T by R equal to I square T R. Understood? In fact, there was a famous scientist called Joule who first coined this expression. Therefore, heat equal to I square T R, this particular formula, heat equal to I square T R, is sometimes also called Joule's law of heating. Understood? You must of course remember all these expressions. In fact, according to Joule's law of heating, Joule said that the heat developed in a resistor is proportional to the square of the current passing through the resistor. The heat developed is proportional to the resistance and it is also proportional to the time which the charge takes in passing through the resistor. So there you go. This is what Joule's law of heating talks about. Let's solve a problem to further understand Joule's law of heating. An electric iron is connected to a 250 volt supply. The iron uses 50,000 joules of energy in 2 minutes. What is the current passing through the iron and what is the resistance offered by the iron? So basically we are given an electric iron which has a resistance in it. The potential difference across the electric iron is 250 volts. We are given the net heat produced by the iron. After all it's, it's using 50,000 joules. All this 50,000 joules must be getting converted into heat. The time is given, the time taken you know by the charge to pass through the iron. We have to find the current through the iron and the resistance passing through the iron. Now we already know that the heat developed is I square RT, isn't it? And it can also be written as V square T by R because V equal to IR. So I is V by R. 50,000 is V square T by R. Now V is given as 250 volts. The time is given as 120 seconds or 2 minutes. So we can easily calculate the value of the resistance R across the iron. It comes out to be V square T by heat generated that is 150 ohms. We can also calculate current passing through the iron by using the expression 50,000 equal to I square RT or VIT. You see VIT is heat generated, isn't it? So I is heat generated divided by VT. Heat generated is 50,000, potential difference is 250 volts and time is 120 seconds. So the current comes out to be 1.67 amperes. There you go. That's the current passing through the electric iron. Here's yet another example problem. Take a look at the circuit shown. What is the heat generated by the 1 ohm resistor in 10 minutes? Here's the circuit. Well, the circuit appears to be complicated. It's got a 3 ohm resistance and then it's got two 2 ohm resistances and one 1 ohm resistance in parallel, isn't it? So what do we do? We have to calculate the heat generated across the 1 ohm resistor in 10 minutes. 